turned into the biggest group of cheese mosas I've ever seen. Nobody can bully me if I already bully myself. She could eat me and I'd literally only feel half of her. It was less embarrassing and more grossly uncomfortable. I'll tell you when we get to the twist. <laughs> I'm Laura and welcome to my channel where I talk about everything weight loss, mental health, and take you along on my 200 pound journey. If you want to know a little bit more about me and how I got started on my journey, make sure to check out my starting my weight loss journey video that's linked in the description box down below. So in the interest of full transparency, I thought I'd wake up today and start off my day right by telling you my story of how I got fat. That's right. I said it. Fat. I'm taking back the power, baby. Nobody can bully me if I already bully myself. Am I using humor right now to avoid talking about hard things? Look at me right now, therapizing myself. My supervisor would be so proud of me. So this is why my family doesn't like to tell me any of their problems. Time to be serious, Laura. Be serious. So my story is basically a story you've heard a million times before, only with a little bit of a twist. I'll tell you when we get to the twist. Basically, I've been overweight my entire life and I became obese probably high school, early college years. I think the first time I became actually consciously aware of the fact that I was overweight was in kindergarten when they would came to do that, um, what is it? Scoliosis test? Was it scoliosis? I don't know. One of those tests, you know, where all the kids line up in the, anyways. Which for whatever reason included a public weigh-in. If only someone had volunteered as tribute for me. Katniss, girl. Where are you at when a girl needs you? So picture this. All of us little munchkins are lined up in the gym, waiting our turns for some weird lady with a stick to tell us to pull up our shirts and bend over so she can tell us whether or not our spine is the right shape or not. Don't they know that kids have enough self-esteem issues as it is, and now they've got to add weight and correct spine shape to the list of things to worry about? I blame the patriarchy. So suddenly, it's my turn and my adorably chubby, innocent self steps up onto the scale and dun da da da, 81.2 pounds. Yeah, I will never forget that moment. I wish I could say that the crowd just hushed for a moment and then it was all over, but I'd be lying. No, those little 50 to 60 pound angels turned into the biggest group of cheese mosas I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, did she just say 80 pounds? I only weigh 40 pounds. She could eat me and I'd literally only feel half of her. <sighs> yes, I have actually heard that one. Well, my mom says fat kids grow up to be losers. Oh, we should ask her to push us on the tire swing. And that about sums up my first experience with public humiliation. And I'm only exaggerating just a little bit. So basically my entire elementary and middle school years, I was the biggest kid in class, or at least the biggest girl. Though I was never huge per se, just chunky. God, I hate that word. Chunky does for me what moist does for other people. I was actually a pretty active kid growing up, always playing outside. I loved being outside in the dirt, on the trampoline, just I was a total tomboy growing up. Oh my gosh, I was always running around. Even in the middle of winter, there were times I would literally go outside when it was snowing with no shoes or jacket on. Somebody should have cast me back then in like the Antarctica version of Survivor. But I also loved fried chicken and rice and gravy. My entire family's from the South, so sue me. Sorry, I need a little water break. H2O, agua. God, I'm so white. Can't even say agua correctly. But then comes seventh grade and I got my period. 
this is the twist. And just a disclaimer, guys, I am about to talk about periods or menstruation in somewhat graphic detail. So if that makes you squeamish, I would skip ahead. Anyways, I get my period and this is where things get weird. So most girls, when they start their period, they might bleed a couple days, like three to five days max. If you're one of those really unlucky bitches, it's probably like seven or eight days, but then it stops and you get a little bit of a break, you know, like three to four weeks. Not me. Oh no. Laura's got to be like an unlucky, unlucky bitch. Let's just put it this way. In any given year, I would have maybe two to six weeks worth of days total, total that I wouldn't bleed. And I know this because I tracked them. And it wasn't just like spotting to light to normal bleeding 24 seven, 365 days a year. Oh no, not for Laura. No, it was like my uterus had a damn river running through it. I literally had to keep multiple pairs of jeans in my locker at any given time, just in case I bled through. And I did. A lot. You know those girls who would walk around with the sweaters around their waist and you thought, oh, they're just insecure and trying to hide their belly rolls? No. I would wear a dark sweater around my waist to try and make it a little less obvious that I had bled through when it would happen in the middle of class. Because, genius, there were days, and by days I mean every day, that all I would have to do is stand up or sit down or shift my hips just a little bit in my seat and it would be like the floodgates would open. And don't get me started about sleeping. I cannot even count how many pairs of pajama bottoms I have had to throw away in my life. And I can't count the number of times I would bleed through my clothes in gym class. Luckily, our gym shorts were maroon, so it was less embarrassing and more grossly uncomfortable. Hey, it's the small victories. And over the years, it just got worse and worse to the point I couldn't go anywhere or do anything without having to pack extra clothes and double checking to make sure that there would be a bathroom within like a 10 foot radius. And even when I could do things, It really just got to the point where the hassle just wasn't worth it. I know it doesn't sound like something that would be emotionally and mentally exhausting, but it was. Not to mention physically because I was anemic and exhausted as hell all the time. When my friends would invite me to parties or dances or to do anything that required me to move any part of my body, more often than not, I just started saying no. I definitely think they began to see me as like the Debbie Downer of the group, even when I was with them, because when they would invite me to do things like play kickball or, you know, run around outside, you know, whatever it was that we were doing, I just, I couldn't. And there were a lot of times when I would have to go home early. I'm surprised that they didn't think I had like some sort of like tumor growing in my brain or something because I always used the excuse that I had a headache. But most of the time it was because I had had an accident and needed to go home. And the weird thing is, is that I never really told anyone just how bad it was. My mom knew a little bit and I probably don't give her as much credit as she deserves because she probably knew more than I thought she did. My doctors tried putting me on a bunch of different birth controls and they did nothing. Nothing but introduce me to the concept of rebound bleeding. Thank you doctors. And most of the time they just kind of had the attitude that it was either because of my weight and so I needed to lose weight even though it was beyond difficult to exercise without having to run to the bathroom every 30 seconds, but you know, whatever. Or because I was trying to get attention. This is like one of the worst excuses ever. She's pretending to bleed nonstop 24 seven, not be able to do anything because she's trying to get attention. And I don't know, I guess I just got to the point where I gave up and I just learned to deal with it. And over the years I became more and more sedentary because like I said earlier, even when I would try to exercise, 
literally like every couple of minutes, it would just be like, crap, got to run to the bathroom. I can remember my mom would ask me to go on walks with her and I would go. And every time I had to make sure that I was wearing like dark black pants or sweats or something because I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was going to have an accident. I was also eating more because my hormones were completely out of control. I'm gonna be honest with you right now, I was a little bit of a bitch as a teen. <laughs> but I definitely think my hormones had something to do with it. Anyways, um, obviously because I was more sedentary and I was eating more and my hormones were out of whack, I just ballooned and the next thing you know i'm heading off to college and i'm at my highest weight ever of like i think it was like 250 pounds and then i put on the freshman 15 and the sophomore 20 and the junior 25 and the senior 50. so by the time that i graduated college i was a whopping 335 pounds and completely miserable and I stayed that weight for a long time, like 2012 to 2016. But then in January of 2016, I believe, I saw a Facebook ad for a new gym in our town that did 12 week fitness challenges with cash prizes at the end. So I was bored and feeling a little bit competitive. So I thought, why the hell not? And it was amazing. It's like those classes were made for me. They were group classes where we did a mix of like free weights, plyometrics, cardio. There were even obstacle courses sometimes, which weirdly enough, I actually loved. We ate high protein diets at 15 to 1800 calories a day, or at least that's what my calorie range was. So unlike before, when I was like eating 900 to 1200 calories a day and pretty much starving myself, I didn't feel deprived. Now that I think about it, those classes were a lot like a little bit less intense versions of like T25 or insanity, if you can imagine that. And it was the first time in 25 years that I had ever stuck to a diet more than like one to two months. And I've literally tried probably every diet under the sun. Dash, Edo, Atkins, Paleo, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, South Beach, you name it. I've tried it. So that first challenge, I lost 46 pounds and I think I was in the top seven in the class. And then I decided to do another challenge. And in the second challenge, I lost 54 pounds and won first place. In fact, you can actually see right there. That's my little first place trophy back there. I also won a thousand dollars, supposedly. So challenge number three comes along and I am feeling good. The best I've ever felt in my entire life. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I was in this amazing headspace. Another 20 pounds down, size 12 to 14. I weighed about 205. And the next thing we know, the gym just closes down because apparently they went bankrupt. I didn't even get my cash prize from the first challenge. None of us did. So, I transferred to another gym and I tried it out for a couple months and I don't know, I just, I hated it. And after that, I just fell into this depressive state that I hadn't been in since high school. I even had some suicidal ideation, which scared the hell out of me. And to cope, I turned to the one coping skill that I knew had always worked for me, food. And I started binging, which I had never been a binger before in my life. I struggled with bulimia for a couple of years in high school, but I never had the binging aspect of it. So all of that on top of the fact that I had just started a new leadership position at work, I was applying to online master's programs, and then I got accepted into a master's program and had to start immediately. So then I was spending any time not at work taking online classes, doing my homework, even had to work an extra 20 to 25 hours a week on top of my job for my required internships. It all just kind of blended together to create this perfect storm that unraveled all of the hard work that I had done from the year before. And I put back on all of the weight that I had lost, plus 50 pounds extra. The end. 
And I just want to say that this is in no way me making excuses for being the weight that I am now. I take 110% responsibility for all of my weight gain, my binging, my yo-yo dieting, all of it. But I also believe that context matters in the sense that it's helping me to be able to look back on my successes and failures before to be able to recognize my triggers and challenges and the barriers to weight loss so that I can proactively plan for the journey I'm on now to try and set myself up for success as much as possible. Well, that was a little rough. I really don't want to stay in the way I'm feeling right now, so I think I'm going to go blast some music and have a little dance party. Sorry, neighbors. And before I end, I just want to say to any of you guys who are on your weight loss journey or just starting your weight loss journey or are in that contemplation stage of starting your weight loss journey, you've got this. We all have our stories. We all have our reasons. We can do this. It's going to be hard and it's going to test our physical and mental and emotional limits. And it's going to feel downright torturous at times, but we can do this. Just know that I'm rooting you on. And if you comment on my videos, I will do everything in my power to respond to all of you guys and be your cheerleader and a support from Washington State. Okay, maybe I lied about the cheerleader part because I am not a cheerleader. This this is not bring it on weight loss style, okay? But I'll be cheering you on. All right, guys, if you like this video, as always, please make sure to subscribe and give it two thumbs way, way up. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell down below so you can join me next time. Bye, everyone.